Yo, so you are a huge fan of authentic, real hip hop. You already know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Pete Rock, DJ Premier, Dilla, A Tribe Called Quest, you know, Q-Tip, the what's considered classic or golden era style hip hop beats, hard drums and samples. As a matter of fact, that's probably why you originally even purchased Machine was because that's the, the style of music that you were trying to emulate. But the problem for us as producers and I watch but the problem for us as producers, and I went through the same exact, you know, trials and tribulations, I guess, was once I got the machine, I thought it was, I thought it would be easy to figure out what to actually sample. I thought it would be easy to figure out where I could even get samples, you know, until I actually sat down to try to do it myself and I realized that I didn't know what I should be listening for, you know, what genres I should be going for the things I should be paying attention to inside of the actual record and music itself to determine what made a good sample or not. And that really took me a while to really understand the, the right process. Okay, so today this is what I wanna do for you. I'm gonna let you look over my shoulder as I dig for records online, all right? I love sample based beats. It's taken me almost five years to sort of perfect my own technique in terms of the elements in which I want to pay attention to when I'm trying to look for good samples, all right? I have a specific formula that I use to go and find samples on the internet and dump it into machine to chop it up and flip it into beats. I'm listening for specific genres, you know, the year of the record. I'm even paying attention to details like the album covers, you know, to determine how creative the, al the album cover is in a lot of cases determines how good the music is gonna be. So I'm going to let you look over my shoulder as I dig for records today on the internet. I'm gonna walk you through this process and break down exactly step by step what I'm looking for. And by the end, you're gonna walk away with a formula that you can use to choose better records, to chop them up and flip them on your machine. If you don't already know, my name is Rob and I'm the author of a really great book. It's called Machine, The Hip Hop Beat Maker's Missing Manual, the number one guide in the world for you as a machine producer that's looking to get more knowledge and more techniques to improve the quality of your sound, all right? But more on that later. Let's jump on over to the computer. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step my sampling process, and uh, by the end, you're gonna be able to choose some hot stuff, all right? So let's get to it. Okay, so let's jump into it. This is um, just sort of like a strategy that I like to, to utilize every time that I sample. It makes it a lot easier than say going to a vinyl record store and spending money just because otherwise you'd have to rely upon you know record the record store as a curator to pick actual good music and to know you know what's worthy of sampling that's not their intention and that's not their main focus obviously so this is the strategy that I use instead it makes it a lot easier for me to discover new music a music that I'd likely never run across in a record store at least in my area um, so this sort of concept is going to be important for you if you're looking to make sample-based beats, all right? So let's jump into it. Before, before we get started, though, I want to make sure that you know that this is not at all legal advice, just because there are implications legally in terms of sampling. Um, obviously, there are legal issues surrounding sampling. If you want to learn more about that, definitely look that up on Google and Wikipedia. Know that if you're trying to sample beats and make profit from the beats that you're sampling, that you can definitely run into legal trouble. So be wary of that, all right? That's the drawback. Um, so let's jump into it. Obviously, a lot of you that follow me already know that I utilize YouTube to look for samples, all right? I think this is the best method, specifically because you can just get the world of music at your fingertips. There are literally probably millions of records lo located on YouTube, records that you'd likely never be able to run across in a record store. It makes it very, very easy to find records, all right? The problem is, though, because that there are millions of records available, available on YouTube, the problem is it takes discipline in order to find what you're looking for on YouTube. You have to have an idea of what you're looking for before you go and just dive into YouTube, all right? So that's the purpose of what we're going to talk about right now. I'm gonna educate you on what you should be looking for and listening for on YouTube so that you can find 
good records to chop and flip and to make into great beats, all right? This is the tough part. This is the part that takes a little experience, all right? So what elements should you pay attention to in order to choose a great sample? How do you find a good sample? How do you know what you should be listening for? The first element, in my opinion, is the instrumentation of the record, all right? And because you're not going to be able to look at the, you know, the, the cover of the record itself, on the back of the credits of every record are listings and credits of the instruments and the musicians who are playing those instruments. So you get an, a good idea and understanding of what sort of vibe the, the record itself has. That's obviously not going to be available to you on YouTube. So what you have to do is you have to just sort of get yourself acquainted with the record. Like, for example, I've got a track here by Roy Ayers called Liquid Love, right? And what I'm listening for are specific types of instruments. I'm listening for electric pianos. I'm listening for good bass grooves. I'm listening for, you know, maybe a synthesizer melody. I'm basically listening for instruments that I know will allow me an easier time to make something that can produce a sample based beat, all right? Because when you're sampling, you're taking on like the sonic characteristics and the flavor of the original piece of music. You know, it's gonna be difficult to make something hot if you're trying to sample an accordion or something fucking corny like that. So just just keep that in mind, all right? Unless you listen to this sort of understanding what I'm talking about. There's a nice electric piano groove in the beginning, nice sort of vibe going on inside the sound. So I think that's a electric piano, a bass guitar, and a a great drummer. It's, it's that simple. It's not too much going on. It's just they're playing things right, all right? So that's the type of things that I'm listening for, listening for instrumentation. Stay away from things that are like heavily, uh, you know, non-based upon instruments that you are aware of, all right? So like I said, any sort of music style that does not contain... Uh, electric piano I'm not really looking for anything that's too synthesized I'm not really looking for just because it's a little difficult in order to create something good the next thing that I'm paying attention to when I'm sampling on YouTube all right is so when I jump onto YouTube I'm listening for specific genres okay or I'm looking for specific genres so I might jump on the main search page and type in type in psychedelic rock I can spell psychedelic right. All right. So I might type in something like psychedelic rock. And automatically, just because of the way YouTube is set up, their search engine is going to play some great psychedelic rock for you. It's going to give you some examples. There'll be some playlists. People who are into this stuff have already assembled, you know, great playlists and great examples of that sound. All right. So me not knowing anything about psychedelic rock, I can automatically go and see like a curated playlist from someone who probably knows a lot about psychedelic rock and immediately cut to the good stuff and not have to search around for, for crap forever. This is something that you would not be able to do, you know, I guess you could do it in a record store, but the person who is responsible for choosing and picking records would have to be really damn good. So that's something that you need to pay attention to. You can do the same thing with other genres of music. So you can type in funk, um, let's say funk playlist, 70s. And that'll give you a good idea of some 70s funk that you could sample. So this will help cut down a lot of the, uh, you know, the expansiveness of, of searching on YouTube, right? Otherwise, you'd be looking for records forever and might not come across anything good. It's a lot more likely that if you are looking for specific styles of music, looking for specific instrumentation and other specific elements that you're going to run across something that you like pretty quickly all right so i'm paying attention i'm looking for psychedelic rock funk soul and r&b all right that's what genres i'm look i'm listening for you can sample other genres but it can be a little bit more difficult you have to be pretty advanced in order to, to grab something from a genre that's not necessarily uh as um in the direction of, of hip hop. So funk, soul, R&B, other like black styles of music make it a lot more easy to, to sample and make into hip hop, all right? So, and also I should, should re reiterate or, or tell you that it's important to realize that 
when you're using YouTube, you, these are, this is basically like a discovery method for you, all right? So pay attention when you're cooking on these playlists. They're going to list out the artists. They're going to list out a lot of information about um, whoever whoever's music that you're listening to. If you find something that you like, you want to dive deeper into that category. Let's say I, I listen to this um, Tower of Power song right here, and it sounds good. What I want to do is listen to more, go on YouTube again and search for more Tower of Power records. Or I might go on Wikipedia and look up this album to determine, okay, I like this this record that they put out. Let me see if uh, if this producer who produced this record has produced more records in this vein. Or I want to see if, you know, for example, maybe the session drummer who played the drums on this place for other other groups inside of this era. So, you know, or maybe this individual record that I like or the individual song that I like, let's listen to this entire record to see if there's anything else on this record that I could sample from. So realize that this is an opportunity for you to come across music that you otherwise would not come across. And don't just scratch the surface. You, you want to make sure that you dive deep into all of this opportunity that you have on YouTube. There's a lot of a lot of opportunity for you to discover music and put yourself on to things you otherwise wouldn't be able to discover. All right, so that's for the genre. Last but not least is the album cover itself. All right, as, as you can see, you can see this more in, probably inside of um, the psychedelic rock thing that we looked up. The album cover is really important to music, and that's something, I guess, that not a lot of people realize. Album cover basically is going to give you an insight into the mind of the artist, right? It's a representation of their style. It's a representation of sort of where they are creatively. And it'll sort of reflect on the direction of the music that they're trying to go into. So to be honest, a lot of things that I'm looking for are sort of trippy looking. Like I want, I'm looking for artists that look like they might have been on drugs and they made it just because it's probably going to be more interesting than you know, other styles of music, just to be to be frank with you. So a creative, you know, that's not necessarily 100% true all the time, but a creative album cover might indicate, you know, it's an 80% relevance to making creative music, in my opinion. So if they have sense enough to make a creative album cover, they likely make some creative music as well, all right? So that's something I'm also paying attention to. So if you see here, not all of these albums have um, the album artwork itself on it, but... You can sort of tell in some situations, if something grabs your eye based upon the album cover, just take a listen to it and, and see if see if you can discover something that you like. And then, like I said, dive deeper if you do discover something that you like into that artist, into the producer who produced that, into the record itself. You know, if you find an individual single that you like, make sure to search for the record. Make sure to search more from those artists and then from the producer and even from the record label that produced that record. Because... Back then, there weren't. It was. It wasn't a lot of super conglomerate record labels. There were a lot of independent and smaller record labels who created music that was in a similar style and a similar vein. There were specifically psychedelic rock record labels that only produced psychedelic rock. There were disco record labels that produced more funk disco only. You know. So by understanding the background of who produced these records and what record label you know, printed these records, you can find, you know, more opportunities to find something in the style that you like. So search and explore on YouTube, you guys. So I know at this point, obviously, you're serious about production and machine. If you're willing to sit here and listen to me for 15 minutes, talk about the intricacies of sampling and what to look for when sampling on the internet, it's pretty clear that you want to take your sound and your skills on machine to the next level. All right. If you're at the point where you want to get to, mach you want to be able to sit down on your machine and be able to bust out really creative sample-based beats without even having to think about what to do. If you want to get your sound to the point where it's polished and professional and crisp, then I recommend that you grab a copy of my book. It's called Machine: The Hip Hop Beatmaker's Missing Manual, and like I said, it's the number one guide in the world for machine producers that make hip hop beats. Okay, I recommend that you grab it. It's 89 pages. It goes into depth 
into the more intermediate and advanced topics on machine. The baby shit you can save for YouTube, all right? There are plenty of channels on YouTube that will show you the 101 basics of how to do baby stuff on machine. This book is about the advanced concepts that are going to you know, teach you how to create better music. So if you're already creating music on machine but you are not satisfied with the quality of your sound, and you wanna learn the techniques that are gonna take your sound and your music and your music career to the next level, grab this guide because it's, like I said, the only in-depth guide in the world focused on teaching you the skills that you need in order to make album quality beats on machine. All right, and the news gets better because right now I, I typically sell this book for 49 bucks. Obviously, even at that price, this book is well worth the investment just because you paid $1,000 if you have a machine studio or $500. It's well worth that investment, $50 in order to be able to create better music in order to improve your sound. Just think about that. If you sold one beat license, the book would pay for itself, all right? But over the last few years, I've sort of figured out that just from a business perspective, it's better for me to really lower the price so that I can get this book into the hands of as many machine producers as possible and expand my brand and build my name in this really tight-knit community, okay? So I'm going to hook you up with a deal today. You can click the link below in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. There's a link in the description. If you're watching this on the blog, there's going to be a link below this video inside the blog article itself. Today, I'm going to hook you up with a deal where you can get this book for just a dollar. Literally one dollar. No catch, no hidden strings behind it. You're going to click the link in the description. You're going to land upon a page that looks like this. You can find out more information about what's inside of all these chapters inside of the book. You're going to click this big yellow button, and like I said, literally a dollar for the best guide in the world on machine that's going to help you take your sound to the next level. Do not wait to take advantage of this deal because I will raise the price soon without warning, and you won't be able to get the same guide. You'll have to pay more for the same thing, all right? So jump in, enter your name and your contact information and your payment information. Like I said, literally one dollar. Grab, the, grab your copy of the book. All right, my name is Rob. I am the author of Machine, the Hip Hop Beatmaker's Missing Manual, and the author of the hiphoprally.com blog, which, you know, go ahead and check that out. It's an in-depth resource for you as a machine producer to learn the techniques that you need to take your sound to the next level. That's important stuff. So subscribe to this channel to get more great, free, intermediate, and advanced concepts on machine. No baby shit. Talk to you tomorrow. We'll, um... We'll jump into more in-depth information about machine. I'll help you improve your sound, all right? So subscribe, grab your copy of the book, talk to you.